Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I wanted to do a get ready with me with a new eyeshadow palette I got. And the topic of discussion is a recap on my second year of teaching and comparing it to my first year of teaching. If you're new here, my name is Brie and this is Breedful Teaching. I just completed my second year in fifth grade and I currently live in Southern California. If you are new here, please be sure to subscribe if you'd like and follow me on Instagram and I post a lot on Instagram too. Let me introduce you to the new eyeshadow palette I got. Put my iced coffee to the side. I got the brand new cremated eyeshadow palette from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. In high school, this was my realm. I loved black eyeshadow in high school. I loved white and black eyeshadow in high school. And I loved to wear like all black in high school, not all black. I just loved wearing like a black jacket, black shirt, jeans, sandals. <laughs> that was my go-to outfit in high school, college. Now I'm expanding a little bit. This is very cool tone gray. Cool tone browns are just, I love it. A little context to what's going on right now. Um, after this, I'm going to a Black Lives Matters march in my hometown with a couple of my friends. I'm going with um, another teacher friend of mine. It's going to be my third march slash protest. <sighs> Indescribable um, what it's like going. I, it's the most powerful thing I've seen in my 26 years of life. If you're curious, I think this is sold out, but they're probably going to restock and with shipping and everything after the fact, it was $77. The product is very good. I'm gonna bring it on in, hello. You know, I've actually really been loving like not wearing any mascara and just having a bold brow. Lady Gaga inspired me. Or I'm not even gonna talk about what I'm diving into. I'm just gonna be showing you what I'm using and talking throughout. My last day of school just happened as of recently. We actually had a drive through going away, like graduation set up for our fifth graders. I'm really happy that we did that because in fifth grade, we made it a pretty big point that fifth grade graduation was like an incentive system because we were running out of ideas. We just decided as fifth grade to say, hey, like this is an incentive, especially starting off second semester. Like if you want a privilege of going to graduation, then uh, these are the, your requirements. So that really helped with behavior, especially because I had a lot of sub second semester because I had trainings to go to so it helped with behavior and then i wanted to give them a graduation anyways i think it's really cute and fun for the kids and it's like a sense of accomplishment because honestly my fifth grade class like we busted our booties all year all year we busted our booties and i think the kids worked really really hard so in the beginning of the year we started to practice race when i taught third grade i, I taught race but in fifth grade not a lot of kids knew what race was. I had a student cry because they couldn't restate the question. And I started with like personable questions. Like, would you rather eat a pickle or eat a jalapeno? And then they would restate the question. If I had to choose between eating a pickle or eating jalapeno, I would choose. That's what we first started doing. And I had students like really in tears like crying about it because they said they didn't know how to do it so that was like the first two weeks of school and by the end of by march we were using race all the time the kids were using race um in writing five paragraph essays so that's how hard my kids worked and all of them were was able to write an essay it was so great they truly worked so so hard we had the drive-through graduation and it was fun i had 17 kids show up out of 27 which i count as a win i wish i could have seen all my kids i don't really want to talk about the impact that the pandemic had on my teaching career like i just want to talk about before the pandemic hit obviously everything was different after and i already did a video on how i feel about remote teaching i'll link it down below so this year compared to last year i feel like compared to my first year of teaching the way I structured my lessons was so much easier. During my first year teaching, I crammed so much information in such little time and it stressed me out trying to feel like I was prepared enough for everything. Yeah, that was a huge difference is my, uh, my lesson approach. I simply did I do, we do, you do, and exit ticket or some sort. It was just so much easier for me to format my uh, lesson plans because I felt more comfortable. 
Now, in the beginning of the year this year, my second year of teaching, I am, again, for my second time, I didn't practice routines and procedures enough. I can't emphasize it enough. We did like icebreakers get to know you. I wanna do it differently this next upcoming school year. Like I'm researching, figuring out better ways. It's just, I didn't practice it enough. And I was a little shocked with how my fifth graders were acting on the first day of school because my third graders were super shy. Like no one talked at all. And my fifth graders, they're already acting up the first day. And it was like, a shock so again i wish i did routines and procedures and i wish i like kind of practiced a better consequence action plan if that makes sense like it's so and it's really hard like being at a new school because you don't know all the consequences that are oops eh. you guys no i love this palette i can wash my hands oh i'm sad i yeah yeah my fault it was my first time in fifth grade and i just didn't know the rules and proce procedures and routines that i needed to teach and honestly as a result of not knowing i was very burnt out towards the end very burnt out towards the end of the year and you can see that in my videos like my last three weekly vlogs before the pandemic hit was i'm burnt i'm burnt out i'm burnt out you know like looking back on it the behavior like got so much better by the time the end of the year hit it's like i can get mad all day at my kids but it's like why am i going to continue to get mad at something that's not that i'm not changing so it's like okay my kids are just acting totally insane coming in from lunch on a tuesday because they don't get recess it's like why would i try to do something curriculum based after that like let's go do a 10 minute pe time outside and then come back and do whatever else we had planned stuff like that i was realizing like okay no wonder why I'm so stressed out and like high strung. So another thing that was different from my first to second year is I had a lot better like a support system. My team this year was fantastic. Last year, no, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> like I can laugh about it now, but it was pretty uh <laughs> terrible at the time. Like, you know, like when you live through something and you're just like, wow, it was so much worse. But when you think back on it, it's like funny i don't know like my lesson development got so much better towards at my second year of teaching like i felt so much better my planning i felt like so much less of a stress with planning and next school year you know depending on what's going on i'm since i teach multiple subject multiple subject is a lot of prep time i'm realizing um, this summer, I'm actually going to be working on getting a single subject in science. I'm going to sign up for fall classes to get my single subject and studying take the C-sets. So next school year, I want to cross or what is it? I said this the other day. I forgot what it was called. When you put multiple subjects into one lesson, I want to do like a month straight of so science. But with science, we're going to be um, like reading uh, narratives, research topics, um, informational texts. Like I want to do that with science. And then the next month I want to focus on social studies. We could do all of that cross cut curricular. You know what I mean? Like we can do all of that. I could do an essay on each topic. I'm excited for the challenge. That's what I want to do, but it's kind of a bummer right now because I don't know what next year is going to look like. It would make my life easier. So I'm kind of learning that you can't teach five subjects a day. You need to cross concepts, science and social studies. It's okay if you don't get to everything. Like, are you serious? No, especially not your first year. Like second year, you just start to get better. And I feel like my third year is going to be my best one yet. But just don't be hard on yourself. Can you imagine if I was hard on myself? I wouldn't get anything done. Oh, another huge, 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 huge difference last year to this year and i was gonna make a separate video on this but i'm just gonna talk about it now my first year teaching i was in a different district and i had to be 
observed four times by my principal. I had two in the fall, two in the summer, or two in the spring. ELA math, ELA math, and all of them were very high stress. I've talked about this so many times, but as a result, I didn't get rehired in that district. How my evaluation went my first year was basically like in the middle. It wasn't meet standard and it wasn't terrible, but it was all in the middle. The only thing I got like proficient in is showing up to work on time and being like professional. Then I didn't get rehired. Now this next school district, I only had to be observed one time and it was so low stress. My kids did amazing. We did a writing lesson and it was great. And for my final evaluation, I got proficient in everything. So I think my main objective or like main takeaway for you is, especially if you're new or not new, just because one district doesn't think you're like proficient in your teaching doesn't mean you're a bad teacher. Honestly, my first year of teaching, I wasn't a bad teacher. Was I a proficient, excellent, like seasoned teacher? No, but my heart was in the right spot. So I wasn't a bad teacher. And then this year I get proficient in everything and my evaluation's like beautiful. Don't change yourself, change your district if it doesn't fit you. Obviously my last district didn't fit me. Now my most, the thing that my last principal like kept telling me that I wasn't doing good well enough at was my gradual release. I mean, I honestly feel like I got a lot better at it, obviously, and I didn't student teach, so it was just a lot harder. And of course, like every year, you're gonna have something that you should work on. That's just how teaching is, like you're never gonna be perfect. Like you could give a really good lesson on all these teaching techniques and be fabulous, but you can still always work on something. What my principal told me to work on for this upcoming school year is just to up the rigor, and I absolutely will. It's just, you gotta get your feet wet. You need to learn how to actually like lesson design to where kids aren't falling asleep. That's my next mission for next school year too. Like I don't want my students to fall asleep while I'm teaching. It's so easy for them too. So it's just like a challenge to keep them intrigued and um, wanting to learn. That's kind of why I want to get a single science and single subject in science. Like I think I can make science so fun hands-on entertaining i really want to teach middle school <sighs> my heart is going towards a single subject like i love fifth graders and i love elementary school but i don't think it's i don't think it fits me high school would be really different for me i've never taught high school or even subs but i sub middle school and i I preferred to sub middle school over like first grade. I would be like middle school. Something else that I would do differently, like piggybacking on what I've said previously is I wanna take longer time getting to know my students. Like I didn't know what to do the third day of school. I was like, I don't know what to do, but there's so much to do on the third day of school. I just wasn't thinking. I could have done routines and procedures more. Um, I do wanna integrate into my third year of teaching the social justice standards and I'm really excited to do that. This is what I love about teaching. I love how you have to be like so creative and like innovative to fit all these different top subjects into a lesson. I can do a social justice standard with ELA and writing all three and pull for a grade. I say like way too often. I need to catch myself on that. Science may be a little bit of a struggle to teach social justice standards in, but it's gonna be interesting to try. As I'm talking to you guys right now, I'm just thinking like, I really want to transition to middle school. It's just, I have to study and take tests. Like, why do I have to take a test? I already took a CSET in science. Thank you very much. Why do I have to do it again? Summer sit down videos, I think are my favorites. So my next get ready with me video is gonna be talking about why I was so burnt out. I've talked about it a little bit, but I just want to make it a topic of discussion. And it's happened two years in a row. <laughs> I'm done. We're going very cool tone with our lip color today. This is also a Jeffree Star liquid lip in Posh Spice. <laughs> what an ugly face to put lipstick on. It is very cool tone gray, but I like it. Okay, you guys, um, I hope this was fun for you. I loved filming it, and I personally love watching videos like this. Um, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments um, if you have any questions or any other like video ideas to do this summer. I'm officially on summer break, and I am just very in a good spot right now. If you were a middle school teacher, 
let me know how you like middle school because I am like 90% going in that direction right now. Let me know how you like high school because when I move, I'll take anything I can get, even if that's like 10th grade science. Uh, I saw a funny like m image on Instagram where it says, why am I waving at the camera by exiting a Zoom meeting? Like I never wave by exiting a normal meeting. Funny. On that note, bye.